It's harvest time, and across the United States, the race is on to bring our food. And what's fantastic about our country is that 80% of what we eat is produced here. Growers in the United States are at the top of their game. Many of the crops grown by US growers are truly world class. But with unpredictable weather and changing consumer tastes on a daily basis, farming is also a tough business. Have we had enough summer sunshine for the crop or is this year's wet July washed away all the harvest? This is the time of year when growers across the land find out whether the blood, sweat and tears they've poured into their farms has paid off. From acres of strawberries in California to wheat fields in Texas and sweet potato farms in North Carolina. We're tracking the harvests of some of the top United States producers in three distinct growing regions each with its own set of challenges. Who had a good year? Who struggled with a bad crop? Now we will find out together. This is Harvest 2023. The Southwest of the United States is home to hundreds of acres of strawberry farms. Workers here are selecting thousands of quality seedlings to prepare for a new strawberry crop. Most of them are immigrants from Mexico and Guatemala. Thousands of strawberry seedlings will then be moved to farms to start a new life. As of 2022, the total area of strawberry cultivation in California is 39,000 acres and two thirds of that is in the Santa Maria area. Every July, about 8,900 workers flock to California farms to grow strawberries. Strawberries prefer a cool coastal climate, which is a major reason California's strawberry fields are so much more productive than those elsewhere. Currently, in California, there are many different varieties of strawberries grown. So strawberry harvesting in this state occurs all year round. Despite the hot weather in California, the strawberry crop in 2023 is not affected. In particular, Strawberry harvest yield at the present time has increased by 8% compared to 2022. As of August 2023, California's strawberry harvest is 1.4 billion pounds. This is good news for strawberry growers in California and strawberry lovers across the United States. Each year, the lettuce fields in Arizona provide about 23% of the country's lettuce production. Early August is when thousands of workers flock to the lower Colorado River Valley area to grow lettuce. Growing lettuce is often done by these farm workers early in the morning to limit the heat of the weather. In 2023, Arizona is the second largest lettuce growing area in the United States with 26,200 acres. The place with the largest lettuce growing area is California with 87,000 acres. In Arizona, hot weather in June and July is a big problem for lettuce farms. In addition, dozens of lettuce samples can also be damaged if they encounter heavy rain lasting several days. On some organic lettuce farms, weed control is done manually 
instead of using herbicides. The lettuce harvest usually takes place from mid-December and lasts until March of the following year. As of July 2022, the lettuce harvest in Arizona is approximately 53 million pounds and this is also considered a successful crop for lettuce producers. Mid-March is when sweet corn is planted in the fields in Washington. In 2023, Washington is the second largest sweet corn growing state in the United States with about 23,000 acres. The largest growing area of sweet corn is in Florida with more than 37,000 acres. Currently, most sweet corn varieties grown in Washington take about 91 days to be harvested. The sweet corn crop in Washington will be considered a success if it does not experience intense heat lasting more than 20 days. Each year, nearly 8,000 workers flock to sweet corn farms in Washington to harvest. Up till now, the sweet corn harvest in Washington is about 757,000 tonnes, down 13% compared to the same period in 2022. I recommend travelling to the sweet corn farms during the harvest season. The atmosphere there is wonderful and will help you feel relaxed. In North Carolina, sweet potato planting usually begins in mid-May. In 2023, the United States has about 157,000 acres of land used for sweet potato production, of which the sweet potato growing area in North Carolina is about 111,000 acres. 35,000 acres more than California, Louisiana and Mississippi combined. After about three months from planting, billions of sweet potatoes here are ready to be harvested. The process of harvesting sweet potatoes in North Carolina usually takes place from June and ends in early July. Every year, Around 7,300 workers travel to sweet potato farms in North Carolina to harvest. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the 2023 sweet potato production is 1.5 million tons, down more than 10% from last year and bringing in a value of about $613 million. This is the sugar beet harvest going on at Sanilac County in Michigan. In 2022, sugar beet acreage in Michigan is about 163,000 acres. The time to harvest sugar beet in Michigan usually lasts in early August and ends at the end of October. It is estimated that in 2023, Sugar beet production in Michigan will reach 2.8 million tons and finished sugar production is about 545,000 tons, up 7% from last year.
Apples are one of the most famous fruits of Washington. The end of February is when the apple tree planting takes place on the Washington farms. These workers will plant about 650 apple trees per acre. As of 2023, there are about 1,455 apple farms in Washington state, with an area of 172,000 acres. They typically harvest about 10 to 12 billion apples each year. In early spring, when young shoots appear, a probiotic is used to protect the buds from attack by insects and aphids. July is usually the time when thousands of migrant workers from Mexico come to farms in Washington to pick apples. The wages of these workers will be calculated based on the number of boxes of apples that they collect. On average, each person will receive about $13 per hour. According to the Washington State Fruit Association's forecast, apple production in 2023 will reach 1.97 million tons, down 9% compared to 2021 because of the impact of a long cold spring. This can be bad news for apple growers. However, do not worry because the number of apples produced was still pretty high. Hello my friends. The United States is one of the countries with the largest agricultural industries in the world. Every year, the country produces billions of pounds of agricultural products to feed 331 million people, as well as export to many other countries. In today's video, we're going to the vast fields of the United States to see how the harvesting of nine of the most popular crops here happens. The first place we will visit in this video is a tomato field in the San Joaquin Valley of California. The beginning of July is the time when the harvest takes place in most of the tomato fields in California. In 2022, the area of agricultural land used for tomato production in the state was 233,000 acres, accounting for 56% of the country's tomato growing area. Billions of tomatoes will be loaded onto trucks thanks to this harvesting machine. On each of these harvesters, a worker will be tasked with removing the remaining tomato stems. Each year, tomato farms in California harvest between 11 and 11.3 million tons of tomatoes. In addition to California, Florida is also one of the states with the largest tomato growing area in the country with 43,000 acres accounting for 9% of the country's growing area. After harvesting, thousands of tons of tomatoes will be transported to the factory for processing. In 2021, the value of fresh tomatoes in the United States is $613 million, and the value of processed tomatoes is $1.27 billion. In recent years, the United States has always been the second largest tomato producer in the world. At the top of the list is China. The second place we will visit in this video is a sweet potato field in the state of Mississippi. Unlike the process of harvesting thousands of tons of sweet potatoes in North Carolina, most of the sweet potatoes in Mississippi are harvested with this machine. The job of this harvester is to dig up all the sweet potatoes from the ground, 
then separate the vines from the sweet potatoes and transfer them to wooden crates. In 2021, Mississippi has 29,000 acres of farmland used to grow sweet potatoes, and the yield is about 276,000 tons, ranking third on the list of the most sweet potato producing states in the United States. After harvesting, hundreds of sweet potatoes in this field will be transported to the factory for packaging. We are currently on a pistachio farm in California. The end of August to October every year is the time when the harvesting process takes place in most of the pistachio farms. Currently, in California, about 370,000 acres of land is used to grow pistachios. These pistachio trees will be shaken so strongly that all of the nuts on the tree will fall. In 2021, California's pistachio production is over 1 billion pounds, representing 98% of the country's production. The remaining 2% of US pistachio production is produced on several farms in Arizona and New Mexico. Once harvested, these boxes filled with pistachios are loaded onto trucks and taken to the factory for processing within 24 hours. These workers are being transported to a field in Florida to pick sweet corn. Most of them are illegal migrant workers from Mexico. After moving to the sweet corn field, their job is to pick millions of ears of corn and pack it right here. The sweet corn harvest in Florida usually starts in October and lasts until the end of June the next year. On average, each worker working in this cornfield will receive about $80 after more than 10 hours of work. In recent years, the area planted to sweet corn in Florida has remained at 37,000 acres, accounting for 39% of the country's sweet corn area. In 2021, the total value of the sweet corn crop in the United States is $777 million. The fifth place that we will visit in this video is a strawberry farm in the state of California. Every year, about 53,000 workers flock to strawberry farms in California to work. They are mainly from Mexico and Guatemala. Strawberry fields are also home to the largest number of immigrant workers in the United States. It is these workers' jobs to pick the ripe strawberries and then put them in boxes. Once harvested, boxes filled with strawberries will be quickly shipped to a collection site where these workers will be marked on their field cards to receive money at the end of the day. On average, each strawberry picker here earns between $75 and $90 per day. Here's what's going on in a celery field in California. Here, thousands of celery plants will be cut and packed by workers from Guatemala. In 2021, in California, around 28,000 acres of farmland is used to produce celery, accounting for 93% of the country's celery growing area. Annual celery production in the United States is about 15.7 million tons, 
and brings in a revenue of $474 million. The celery harvest usually lasts from 6 a.m. and ends at 5 p.m. On average, each worker working here receives an average salary of about $9 per hour. The seventh place we will visit in this video is a cranberry farm in Wisconsin. These two men are pulling billions of cranberries close to the pump to load them into a truck. As of 2021, around 21,000 acres of land in Wisconsin is used to grow cranberries. The sandy and peat bogs of central and northern Wisconsin are perfect growing conditions for this plant. In 2021, cranberry production in the United States is 7.9 million barrels. Each barrel of cranberries weighs 100 pounds. Currently, Wisconsin is the state with the largest cranberry production in the United States with 4.9 million barrels, accounting for 62% of the national production. Billions of cranberries, once harvested, are sent to the factory to be made into sauces, juices, or dried. Here's what's going on at a blueberry farm in Georgia. This machine is used to drop whole blueberries, then they will be placed in plastic trays. For many years, blueberries have been the most produced fruit in Georgia with around 18,000 acres and an annual production of approximately 39.3 million pounds. Billions of blueberries are harvested and sent to factories for packaging or juice production. The last place we will visit in this video is a cucumber field in Michigan. Harvesting millions of cucumbers is quite similar to the process of harvesting sweet potatoes in Mississippi. In 2021, the United States has about 43,000 acres of farmland used for cucumber production, of which Florida is the state that produces the largest amount of fresh cucumbers in the country, and Michigan is the state that produces the largest number of pickled cucumbers. After harvesting, millions of cucumbers here will be transported to the factory to produce pickled cucumbers. Have you ever eaten pickled cucumber before? Let us know what you think about this dish. Hello my friends, the United States has always been one of the most developed agricultural countries in the world. To demonstrate this, today we are going to the farms in this country to see how the process of harvesting some agricultural products is done with modern harvesting machines. Later in the video, we'll go to some US waters to see how the fishing of certain species of seafood like crabs and shrimps goes down. The first place we will visit in this video is an almond farm in the state of California. This machine is used to clamp firmly on the almond tree, then it will shake very strongly and cause the almonds to fall to the ground. Imagine what would happen if there was a bird's nest on this almond tree. This is what is obtained after the almond trees are shaken. Billions of almonds waiting to be harvested. First, this machine will be used to gather the almonds into a straight line. Currently, California is home to the largest almond acreage in the United States, with about 1.33 million acres. This also makes the United States the world's largest producer of almonds. Annually, almond farms in the United States produce about 2.1 million tons of almonds, accounting for 80% of the world's almond production. In second place is Spain, 
with around 200,000 tons. After the almonds are gathered into a straight line, this machine will be used to transfer the whole almonds to specialized trucks before taking them to the processing plant. Do you want to go to the almond farms in the harvest season? When the almond harvest is over, the workers here will water to reduce dust. The second place that we will visit is a vast sugarcane field in Louisiana. Every October is when the cane harvest takes place across the fields of Louisiana. Currently in Louisiana, about 400,000 acres of farmland are used to grow sugarcane and the annual sugarcane output here is about 13.3 million tons, ranking second in sugarcane production in the country. According to statistics of the United States Department of Agriculture, in 2021, Florida is the state with the largest sugarcane production in the country, with 17.1 million tons. After harvesting, thousands of tons of sugarcane will be poured into these wagons before being transported to the sugar factory. This is an exterior view of a sugar mill in Louisiana. Currently in Louisiana, there are 11 operating sugar factories with the annual sugar production in this state is about 1.5 million tons, accounting for 20% of the country's sugarcane production. In 2021, about 46% of the United States sugar was produced from sugarcane and the remaining 54% is from sugar beets. Here's what's going on in a cotton field in Western Texas. This machine is used to harvest millions of cotton plants and then the cotton will be packed into round bales. According to statistics, in 2021, the United States has about 179,000 acres of farmland used to grow cotton. In particular, the cotton area in Texas accounts for 40% of the country's area. In addition to Texas, California, Arizona, Mississippi and Louisiana are also states with large planting areas across the country. In 2021, the United States produced about 18.3 million bales of cotton, less than half of China in output. But the United States has always been the world's number one cotton exporter. After harvesting, millions of bales of cotton will be transported to a gathering location outside of a fabric factory. Annually, about 126,000 jobs are created in the cotton industry, and the revenue generated from this industry is more than $21 billion. The fourth place we will visit in this video is a potato farm in the state of Idaho. Here, billions of potatoes will be dug out of the ground before they are loaded onto trucks. According to statistics, in 2021, in Idaho, about 315,000 acres of farmland are used to grow potatoes. It is also the largest potato producing state in the country. Annual potato production in Idaho is about 129 million tons, representing 33% of the country's production. After billions of potatoes are dug out of the ground, they will be loaded onto trucks by this harvester. In addition to Idaho, Washington is also one of the two largest potato producing states in the country, with about 93.3 million tons. After harvesting, millions of tons of potatoes will be transported to warehouses for storage. 
Here's what's going on at a Wisconsin potato storage warehouse. Here, billions of potatoes we moved inside the warehouse thanks to this conveyor system. In 2021, the value of the US potato industry is $4.1 billion. Next, we will go to the waters in Louisiana to see how the fishing of millions of shrimp here works. Every day, these fishermen will go to the sea about 70 miles from the mainland to catch shrimp. These are recreational shrimp fishers. They use trawl nets that are 16 to 25 feet long and are limited to no more than 250 pounds of shrimp per day per boat. Although the nets yield a lot of fish as bycatch, all these fish will be used to feed the seagulls. The main aim of these fishermen is to catch shrimp and crab. For many years now, Louisiana has always been the state with the largest shrimp production in the country, with about 110 million pounds caught each year. The next place we will visit is Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. These are trap cages that have been prepared to trap blue crabs. Every morning, these fishermen will put the bait in the trap cage and release it into the sea. After about an hour, the blue crabs appear inside the trap cages, and this is when the fishermen pull them up. According to a report in 2021, the Chesapeake Bay blue crab catch is 41.6 million pounds and is responsible for 50% of the blue crab production in the United States. After the fishing process is complete, millions of blue crabs will be brought to this factory to be processed into canned blue crabs. Millions of blue crabs will be brought to this steamer and cooked. Next, these workers will filter the crab meat and put it in these boxes. Hello my friends, today we are going to the fields and farms of the United States to see how some of the most impressive moments in the process of cultivating and harvesting the agricultural products of this country happens. We believe that the agricultural moments appearing in this video will surprise many Americans with what is happening every day in farming areas across the country. Also, chances are you'll fall in love with America's great agriculture even more after watching this video. The first place we will visit in this video is a pistachio farm in the San Joaquin Valley in California. According to statistics of the United States Department of Agriculture in 2021, in California 372,000 acres of land are used to grow pistachios. The end of August to the beginning of October each year is the time when thousands of workers and machines flock to the pistachio farms in California to start the harvest. The process of harvesting pistachios in California is quite similar to that of almond farms. Although the harvest takes place every year with strong shaking, this does not affect the growth of the pistachio tree. The average lifespan of pistachio orchards here is about 70 years. At each annual pistachio harvest, the air quality around these farms is always very bad due to too much dust. Once harvested, these boxes filled with pistachios are loaded onto trucks and taken to the factory for processing within 24 hours. In 2021, California's pistachio production is 1.05 billion pounds representing 98% of the country's production. 
the remaining 2% of US pistachio production is produced on several farms in Arizona and New Mexico. Have you ever eaten Californian pistachios? Let me know how you feel about the taste of this nut. Next, we will go to a garlic field in the city of Gilroy, California, to see how the process of harvesting thousands of tons of garlic here takes place. Unlike other garlic growing regions, most garlic in California is harvested manually by workers from Mexico. This type of harvesting is said to be less expensive than using machines. These workers will cut the roots and stems of the garlic plant, and the plant will be placed in 5 litre plastic buckets. After these plastic barrels are filled with garlic, these workers will dump them into larger wooded crates. After each of these, these workers will be ticked once on their field trip. The salary that the garlic harvesters here receive is about $11 to $13 per hour. Thousands of tons of garlic after harvesting will be transported to the factory for packaging. In 2021, California has about 24,700 acres of farmland used to grow garlic, and the yield is 346 million pounds, accounting for 91% of the country's production. We are now in a bog in Wisconsin, where the harvest of billions of cranberries is about to take place. This machine is used to make cranberries fall off the tree and float to the surface. As of 2021, about 21,000 acres of land in Wisconsin is used to grow cranberries. The sandy and peat bogs of central and northern Wisconsin are perfect growing conditions for this plant. This is what was obtained after billions of cranberries were shed from the trunk, excluding this black dog of course. Next, the workers here will use the pump to transfer billions of cranberries into the truck. Unlike other fruit and vegetable growing regions, you won't find migrant workers working in these cranberry fields. Only Americans work here. In 2021, Cranberry production in the United States is 7.9 million barrels. Each barrel of cranberries weighs 100 pounds. Currently, Wisconsin is the state with the largest cranberry production in the United States, with 4.9 million barrels, counting for 62% of the nation's production. Billions of cranberries, once harvested, are sent to the factory to be made into sauces juices or dried. Only 5% of US cranberry production is sold fresh. The truth is that a lot of people don't know how cranberries are made, and they even think it grows on trees like cherries. This is a pineapple harvest going on in a farm in Hawaii. Thousands of pineapples will be loaded onto trucks this way. Currently, the area under pineapple conservation in the United States is about 15,300 acres, much less than the area planted with other fruit trees such as apples and pears. According to statistics, in 2021, the US pineapple production is about 169,000 tons while the worldwide pineapple production is 27.6 million tons. Thousands of pineapples after harvesting will be transported to the factory for packaging. The next place we will visit in this video is a sugar beet farm in Michigan. Mid-August is when the harvest takes place in most of the sugar beet fields of Michigan. In 2021, 
there are 878 sugar beet farms with a total area of about 160,000 acres. The majority of sugar beet cultivation in the state is concentrated in the area east of the Mississippi. This is the ongoing harvesting process in another sugar beet field. Here, thousands of tons of sugar beets will be loaded onto trucks by this modern machine. According to the Michigan Sugar Company, the state's 2022 sugar beet production could reach about 11.4 million pounds. Hello my friends, along with the United States, some countries in Europe such as Germany, France or the Netherlands are always considered to be the most modern agricultural countries in the world. In today's video, we will say goodbye to the US farms and visit some farms in Europe to see how the farmers here harvest thousands of tons of vegetables and fruits. The first place that we will visit in this video is a cucumber field in the German state of Bavaria. About 20 workers including both men and women, will lie on this machine and pick millions of cucumbers. This is a very special way of harvesting cucumbers that we don't see in the US cucumber fields. Millions of cucumbers after picking will be transferred to the truck's trunk thanks to the conveyor system. Currently in Germany, there are about 6,000 acres of agricultural land used for cucumber cultivation and the annual yield is about 261,000 tonnes, of which Bavaria is the state that accounts for 35% of the country's cucumber production. Next, we will go to a sweet corn farm in France to see how the process of harvesting hundreds of tons of sweet corn here goes. Unlike sweet corn farms in the United States, most sweet corn in France is harvested by machines instead of using migrant workers. According to statistics, in 2021, there are about 56,000 acres of farmland in France used to produce sweet corn and the area of sweet corn in this country is the second largest in Europe after Hungary. In recent years, French sweet corn production has always remained at 183,000 tonnes, seven times less than the amount of sweet corn produced in the United States. Once harvested, millions of ears of sweet corn are filled into truckloads before being shipped to a processing plant. Currently, up to 82% of sweet corn in France is processed into canned sweet corn. This is what is happening in a cabbage field in the Netherlands. At some cabbage farms in the Netherlands, Harvesting is also done manually with dozens of workers. Thousands of cabbages will be cut and transferred into containers with this conveyor system. The process of harvesting cabbage here is similar to harvesting millions of cabbages in the US state of Arizona. The end of September to November every year is when thousands of labourers flock to cabbage farms in the Netherlands to work. On average, these workers will work six hours a day and their pay is about $35 per hour. This is the process of harvesting in another cabbage field in the Netherlands. This modern machine will be used to pull the cabbages out of the ground. Next, the cabbage roots 
will also be automatically cut off before they are transferred to the truck. In 2021, the Netherlands has about 26,000 acres of farmland used for cabbage production, and the yield is about 61,000 tonnes. The fifth place we visit in this video is a field growing peas in France. Billions of pea plants here will be cut by these modern machines. After cutting, this machine will separate the stem and the peas will be transferred to the tank area of the machine. Once harvested, billions of peas are transferred from the harvester's storage tank to the truck's container before being transported to the processing plant. In 2021, the area used for planting peas in France is about 24,000 acres and the yield is about 255,000 tonnes. Currently, China is the largest pea producer in the world with 12.5 million tonnes, followed by India with 5.4 million tonnes and the United States with 275,000 tonnes. Here's what's going on at a plum farm in Serbia. The process of harvesting plums here is quite similar to the harvesting of almonds and pistachios in California. This machine will be used to grip the plum tree and shake it vigorously to make thousands of plums fall. Thousands of plums are then transferred to plastic trays in this way. The job of these workers is to remove part of the leaves mixed in with the plums. In 2021, the area under plum cultivation in Serbia is about 72,000 acres and the yield is about 713,000 tonnes. Currently, China is the world leader in plum production with about 6.6 .6 million tonnes per year. The United States is also one of the countries with a large plum production in the world with about 265,000 tonnes. The last place to appear in this video is a green bean field in the Netherlands. Basically, harvesting green peas is quite similar to the process of harvesting peas. Currently, in the Netherlands, about 3,000 acres of farmland are used to produce chickpeas and the annual production of chickpeas is about 33,000 tonnes, eight times less than China, which produces 76% of the chickpea production all around the world. Billions of green beans after harvest we poured into truck containers before being transported to processing and packaging plants. Hello my friends, today we will continue to several farms in the United States to see how the process of harvesting thousands of tons of vegetables and fruits happens here. In addition, in this video we will also see how Americans deal with millions of wild birds that are considered pests that cause serious damage to many agricultural crops. In the first part of the video, we will go to a honeybee farm in Yakima County, South Central Washington State, to see how the workers here harvest thousands of pounds of honey. In preparation for the honey harvesting process, the workers here will remove the honeycomb frames from the hive and they will use smoke to remove the bees clinging to these frames. According to USDA statistics, in 2022, there are about 121,000 honey beekeepers in the United States. Of these, 
about 37,000 people are professional beekeepers. Currently, there are about 2.7 million bee colonies in the country, and California is the state with the largest number of bee colonies in the country, with about 253,000 colonies. However, the states that produce the most honey in recent years in the United States are North and South Dakota. California only ranks third on this list. After the honeybees have been driven out, thousands of honey frames are sent to the factory for honey production. At the same time, new frames will be placed in the hive to continue the honey mining process. At this factory, workers will use a scraper knife to cut the beeswax covering the outside of the honey frame. And now the sweetest part is revealed. According to a report by the American Honey Producers Association, in 2022, honey production across the country is 127 million pounds, down 14% from 2021. On average, each colony yields about 46 pounds of honey per year. After the beeswax is cleaned, these frames will be placed into the honey extricator and the machine will be rotated until all the honey stuck to the frame is cleaned off. Finally, the honey is filtered and stored in hundreds of barrels, each weighing 620 pounds. Each year, the honey industry in the United States brings in sales of 315 to 330 million dollars. We are currently in the southwest of the San Joaquin Valley, California to see how millions of pomegranates are harvested. At the end of October, heavy rains caused severe damage to dozens of pomegranate farms here. Thousands of pomegranates have been cracked, causing their quality to be greatly reduced. These pomegranates will be picked and sold to juice factories instead of being shipped to supermarkets or farmers markets. According to USDA statistics, by 2022, in the United States, there are 1,056 active pomegranate farms with an arable land area of around 33,000 acres. Of that, up to 91% of pomegranate production in the United States is produced in California. During the annual pomegranate harvest season, about 2,100 workers flocked to farms to pick this fruit, and their average salary in 2022 is $9 per hour. This is the mid-break meal of the pomegranate harvesters, and it is provided free of charge by the farm owners. The next place we will visit is the garlic fields in Kern County, Southern California. Unlike other garlic growing regions, most garlic in California is harvested manually by workers from Mexico. The beginning of June every year is the time when thousands of workers flock to these garlic fields in California to work. And this work will last for about three to four weeks. These workers will cut off the roots and stems of the garlic plant, and the garlic will be placed in plastic buckets. After that, these plastic buckets are filled with garlic, and these workers will dump them into larger wooden crates. 
After each of these, the workers will be marked on their scorecard. The salary that the garlic harvest workers here receive is around $9 to $13 per hour. In California, in 2021, has about 24,700 acres of farmland used to grow garlic, and the yield is about 347 million pounds, accounting for 91% of the country's production. At peak times, the garlic harvest will be done after dark to keep up with the schedule. Next, we will go to a citrus farm in Polk County, located in the heart of Florida, to see how the process of harvesting millions of citrus fruits happens. In recent years, Florida has always been the state with the largest citrus growing area in the United States, with around 621,000 acres used, accounting for 73% of the citrus growing area of the country. The beginning of October to June every year is the time when citrus harvesting in Florida is at its busiest. The citrus industry in the state is estimated to provide 76,000 jobs and generate an impact of nearly $9 billion annually. According to a USDA report in 2022, Florida alone produces up to 34 billion pounds of citrus fruit. This contributes to making the United States the second largest citrus fruit producer in the world, second only to Brazil. In the next part of the video, we will travel to North Dakota to see how the hunters here hunt thousands of snow geese. During their migration, snow geese often stop at wetlands, estuaries, grain fields, or any other places where they can find food. The appearance of rows and rows of snow geese in certain areas can cause the vegetation and natural landscape in that area to be severely affected because their droppings are abundant. In preparation for hunting hundreds of snow geese, Early in the morning, these hunters place hundreds of fake snow geese in the field as bait. When detecting a flock of snow geese passing by, all these hunters will use whistles combined with the movement of fake geese to lure the geese to fly close to the ground. When hundreds of snow geese are close enough to the ground, the hunters will open fire all at once, and each time they can catch 20 to 30 snow geese. About 540,000 snow geese are hunted each year in the United States and Canada. Because snow geese nest and breed in remote areas, hunting snow geese does not affect their numbers. This is a flooded forest in the state of Wisconsin. Here, the hunters are preparing the necessary items to prepare to hunt wood ducks. Basically, the process of preparing to hunt wood ducks is similar to the preparation process for hunting snow geese or Canadian geese. When detecting wood ducks, hunters will use fake sounds to lure them to fly low, and when the distance is right, they will open fire to take down this wild bird. It is estimated 
that there are four and a half million wood ducks living in the United States. And about 1.2 million are shot by hunters across the country each year.